We're gonna pick five pictures on this mug. Each picture represents a movie. I wanna see if you can guess what the movie is. I got one, how about this? What is that? License plate, nervous, three, two, one. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It was on the back of the red Ferrari they were driving. All right, here we go. Okay, it's right there. The blue and the red pill. Come on, you gotta know that one. The Matrix, take the blue or the red. Oh, I wish I'd taken the blue. Anyway, uh, let's try this one. The little spinning top. Do you know what movie that is? Three, two, one. Inception, remember when that top was spinning at the end? Awesome movie, love that. Let's do a really hard one. If you guys get this, I will be really proud of you, okay? And be honest here, here we go. Number four, we are the people. We are the people. No, we are the people, or we are the people. Three, two, one. Taxi driver, scene where Albert Brooks had, he's on the phone and he had ordered the wrong buttons right before Robert De Niro comes in. Great scene, okay? Did anybody get that? Did you get that? If you got that, awesome. You know your film. Okay, we're gonna do one last one. I want you to get this, here we go. What movie is this? Five dollar milkshake. Five dollar milkshake. Ready? Three, two, one. Pulp Fiction. Remember when they're in the diner, John Travolta's like, mm, it's a pretty beep good milkshake. Okay, well that concludes Pal Detect's movie coffee mug trivia. Uh, yeah, let's start the show. Hi everyone, today we're talking about mechanical versus electronic shutter, specifically for the Fujifilm X-T3 camera. There are actually six different shutter options for the X-T3, and the first three are mechanical shutter, electronic shutter, and electronic front curtain shutter. Now the next three are sort of combinations of the first three that allow the camera to choose a shutter option for you based on a given shooting situation. Mechanical plus electronic shutter, electronic front curtain shutter plus mechanical shutter, and electronic front curtain plus mechanical plus electronic shutter. <laughs> Whatever happened to just, you know, pressing the button and taking the picture. Okay, right now it is time for Shutter 101. On a mirrorless camera, the camera's sensor is always exposed to light. There's nothing between your sensor and the light. And it's done that way so that you can have this awesome live view in the back and you get these wonderful mirrorless camera benefits like the live view histogram. When you take a photo, you're always starting from the position of a completely open and exposed sensor. And on your X-T3, when you're in mechanical shutter mode, there are four different and separate actions that happen each time you take a photo. Let's, let's take a look at these now. When you first press the shutter button, the front curtain goes up all the way and resets the sensor. It, it clears everything out, resets the sensor. That's step one. Step two is when it actually takes the picture. The front curtain moves down and the rear curtain kind of moves down with it. The distance between the two and how long they're there is your shutter speed. That's your exposure right there. And then step four that happens is that the shutter returns to live view. So it goes back up. Okay, so that's the mechanical shutter. The X-T3 also has the option to change the shutter to an electronic mode and to have an all electronic, no moving parts, electronic shutter system. And with the electronic shutter, there's no curtains going up and down. There's no movement whatsoever. Here's how you set your camera for the electronic mode. Go up to the little camera right here and choose shutter type and change it to electronic shutter. What are the advantages to using electronic shutter? Well, the first thing, it's totally silent, which is great for say weddings or nature photos where having no sound at all on the camera is critical. You gotta go down to the little wrench and then you simply go into sound setup. Shutter volume is right here and you can go from off to one of these choices right there. And you can even choose a shutter sound, which is kind of funny. So the next advantage of having an electronic shutter are high shutter speeds. You can get shutter speeds of up to 1 32,000th of a second. Now one thing to 
keep in mind about that is the shutter speed dial only goes to one over 8,000. So how do you get higher than that? When you're in the electronic shutter mode and you're all the way up to 8,000, you simply rotate the rear command dial. And as you can see, it will kick it up to 32,000. So the next advantage is no shutter shock. Because there's no mechanical parts moving, you reduce the risk of even the slightest shutter vibration, reducing the sharpness of your images. And this would be important for macro work or using super telephoto lenses on a tripod with slow shutter speeds. Because you're all electronic, the shutter is now very, very fast in terms of responsiveness. And thus you have substantially reduced shutter lag. Some features, and this is another benefit of having electronic shutter, some features on the X-T3 actually require electronic shutter, such as the 30 frames per second option for high speed burst shooting. And that, that's electronic shutter only. And finally, number six, using electronic shutter reduces the wear and tear on the shutter itself. All cameras have a shutter life expectancy and eventually your shutter will wear out. Interestingly, I went to the Fuji website looking for any information on what the life expectancy of the X-T3 shutter mechanism is and I really couldn't find any factual information about it. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that it's in line with other mirrorless cameras and it's between 100,000 and 200,000 actuations. So one of the big advantages of using electronic shutter is there's zero wear and tear on your shutter. Now, it's not all lollipops and springtime flowers. Because of how the electronic shutter operates, it does have some limitations and two big problems. The first limitation is that you cannot use the flash. And for a lot of people, that's a big limitation. So no flash. The second limitation is that your ISO is limited to between 160 and 12,800. Now that's a pretty big range, but that's the limit if you're using electronic shutter. And the extended ISO settings are also disabled in electronic shutter. And third, long exposure noise reduction is disabled as well. Now, moving on to the two problems, and I think they're big ones. The first problem is with banding that occurs in some lighting situations. Check this out. I took a picture of a lamp against a wall. The first picture was taken with mechanical shutter and the second one taken with electronic shutter at one one thousandth of a second. Look at that. Look at the difference. You see the banding that's happening right here? Here's the first one, mechanical shutter. Here's the second one electronic shutter. And by the way, I wasn't using some weird kind of fluorescent bulb that very few people have. The bulb that I had in this light, in this photo, is one of the common household GE LED lights. So I, that's the bulb I had in there, and you can see the banding is really clear. The second problem is rolling distortion that can appear in certain types of subjects. Okay, let's take a look at that. And this picture was shot using the mechanical shutter at one eight thousandth of a second. Then I took a picture of it with an electronic shutter and that was shot at one sixteen thousandth of a second. And look at that. You see how it's bending and bowing and like that. Look at that. This is the mechanical shutter version and this is the electronic shutter version. Clearly, clearly there's distortion. Then I did the classic, you know, ceiling fan. Here's one shot with a mechanical shutter and here is one shot with an electronic shutter. And as you can see, uh, bending distortion here and right here. The reason that you have the banding problem and the distortion problem has to do with how electronic shutter captures the light in the image and exposes the sensor. Okay, so this is your sensor, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna just make this as simple as possible. This is your sensor. And when you're using electronic shutter, as you're exposing the sensor for your lip, for your image, it starts right here and it goes across and exposes the, the, the top row, it exposes the top row, okay? And then when it's done doing that, it drops down a row and continues here and on and so on and so forth until it gets all the way down to here. 
then it's finished and it's exposed your sensor. But the problem with this is the time it takes to get from here to here, if you are shooting a really fast subject at a really high shutter speed, like propellers of a plane, spins so fast that it's moved position between here and here, so it has this kind of bend to it. So what to do about these problems? In comes in the third type of shutter option called electronic front curtain shutter, or EFC, as I'm gonna to refer to it. When using EFC, it's kinda of like getting the best of both worlds. The front shutter curtain is left open, so there's no front shutter curtain at all. The sensor then captures the image, but then the rear shutter is synced with that and completes the process. So basically, the exposure is started very quickly and quietly and electronically, and then it's finished or closed out by the rear curtain shutter mechanically. And this is such a nice compromise between using, you know, an all out mechanical versus an all out electronic shutter. When you're using EFC, you can use a flash. So you can use a flash. The sound of the shutter is quieter because only half the moving parts are moving. So the sound of the shutter is quieter. It's not as quiet as all electronic, but it is quieter. The wear and tear on your shutter is reduced because only half the parts are moving and shutter shock is still eliminated just as if you were shooting with an electronic shutter and it significantly reduces the effect of rolling shutter distortion. You don't have that type of distortion that you have with all electronic. This sounds perfect, right? I mean, why not just leave the camera on EFC all the time? Well, even Fujifilm in their own manual, page 135, when using the electronic front curtain shutter, note the following. Faster shutter speeds are more likely to result in uneven exposure and loss of resolution in out of focus areas of the frame. So basically even Fujifilm says that if you use EFC, you will have uneven exposure at high shutter speeds. Now, I personally noticed other issues with this, particularly when using prime lenses wide open at faster shutter speeds. Check this out. So I shot this photo right here using the Fujifilm 56 millimeter prime lens at F 1.2 at 1 1,000th of a second. The next picture I shot was the same everything except it was electronic shutter at one four thousandth of a second. Okay, so let's have a look at these pictures side by side and there's been zero processing or post-production done to them. They are straight out of the camera. As you can see, it's much sharper. It's just sharper. It's not, you know, it, it, you can see the outlines of it more. Look at that. Look how sharp that is right there. I mean, that's not a, a you know, a beautiful Japanese bokeh, right? That, no, that's a Japanese ninja throwing star. That's what that thing looks like. It's all sharp and, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't want that in my picture. So what to do? What's the best recommendation for the type of shutter that you should be using? Basically, let's cut to the chase. What should you do? First of all, I would never have the camera default to an all electronic shutter, never. You never know what your shooting conditions will be like 100%. So for me, it's just, it's not worth the possibility of a failed shot. And you know, knowing me, if I leave it in all electronic mode, I'm gonna to forget to take it out of electronic mode. Not that I forget things like formatting SD cards left in the camera when, you know, calling them a quirk. Anyway, if you've tested and you're sure that electronic shutter will work in a specific scenario, then by all means, electronic shutter is a great tool to have in your camera arsenal. But leaving it on by default, no, I would not do that. The same goes for the last three options of letting the camera choose for you. I don't like those. I like to be in control of my shots and decide something as important as the type of shutter myself. But you might find they're helpful. Interestingly, when I got my X-T3, I was using all mechanical all the time, but now I'm starting to use electronic front curtain shutter more and more, and I really like the benefits it gives me, and I recommend 100% that you enable it on your camera and go out shooting some test shots with it. Don't go shooting a wedding just yet or something for a paying client. Test it out first. See what you get under the conditions you normally shoot with. However, I would not use electronic front curtain shutter to shoot at shutter speeds above one two thousandth of a second using a prime lens such as the 56 millimeter for portraiture at f 2.0. But that specific situation aside, I do recommend that you consider adding electronic front 
curtain shutter to your photography toolbox. Play around with it and see how to best integrate it into your photography workflow. I would love to hear about your experiences using electronic shutter or electronic front curtain shutter. How does it work for you? Do you find it helpful? What, you know, do you use it regularly? Let us know in the comments. The comments are awesome because we can all learn from them. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. High shutter speeds of up to 132 thousandths. So the next <clears throat> 32 thousandths. So the next advantage of high shutter. The next advantage of having a high. So the next advantage of having electronic. So the next advantage of having an electronic shutter are high shutter speeds. You can get shutter speeds of up to 132 thousandth of a second.